In this video, we'll explore how to use NVIDIA Tensor RT for production deployment of a multi-layer recurrent neural network that predicts the next character in a sequence. Tensor RT is a programmable inference accelerator that takes in a trained neural network as input and generates an optimized runtime engine. The easiest way to get started with Tensor RT is with the container in NVIDIA GPU Cloud. Once you install Tensor RT, you can find various samples under the samples directory. Today, let's focus on steps needed to accelerate inference of a character level language model by looking at the care RNN sample. You can find full code in the sample care RNN.cpp file. The training model uses a multi layer recurrent neural network. As you can see, there are three types of layers. The first and second are RNN layers with LSTM cells. The third is a fully connected layer, and finally, a top K layer is added to identify the character that has maximum probability of appearing next in the sequence. Now that you have a grasp of model structure, let's walk through the code to optimize this model with TensorRT. We have trained the model in TensorFlow and exported the required checkpoint files to the model directory. Now we're ready to get started. Before creating the TensorRT network, the first step is to extract weights from the checkpoint files. For this, we've provided the script. Using this script, we have exported the weights into this WTS file. To load these weights, we've provided a helper function that takes in the WTS file and names for the weights as input, and returns a map containing the extracted weights. Once the weights have been imported, it's time to create a builder and an empty network based on that builder. Let's now add the layers seen in the model architecture. Add the RNN layer by specifying operation mode to LSTM and setting layer count to two, as we have two RNN layers. For an RNN layer, weights and biases need to be set separately. So first, we need to convert the weights and biases from TensorFlow format to TensorRT format. For this, we've provided helper functions that do these required format conversions. Now we can set the weights and biases for each gate and layer. This loop iterates over the two layers and eight gates to set the correct gate weights and biases for the RNN layers. Next is the fully connected layer. We can implement this layer in TensorRT with a matrix multiplier layer and an element wise layer. Alternatively, you can directly use the fully connected layer of TensorRT, but it requires a reshape of the weights before they are fed to this layer. The matrix multiplication layer is used to execute the first step of the functionality provided by a fully connected layer. We add a constant layer prior to it so that the weights can be stored in the engine. The output of the constant and RNN layers are then used as inputs to the matrix multiplication layer. The element-wise layer is used to execute the second step of the functionality provided by a fully connected layer. A constant layer is added here as well to store the biases. Output of the FC bias constant layer and matrix multiplication layer are used as inputs to the element-wise layer. Output from this layer is then supplied to the top K layer. Top K is last layer of the network. This layer has two outputs. The first output is an array of the top K values. The second, which is more of interest to us, is the index at which these maximum values appear. And that's it. Now we're ready with our network. The next step is to build the engine with the help of the above network. Once the engine is built, we can serialize it for later use. Now we can destroy the network and builder. Next deserialize the engine from the shared memory buffer and create a context that will be used to do inference. The final step is to perform inference. The do inference function takes in an input string and the weight map and uses them to generate the expected output string. Weight map is used here to get the embeddings. The two main tasks of this function are seeding the network and generating data. We seed the RNN with preset input so it can start generating a sequence of characters based on the initialized state. Inside step once, 
the output states are preserved for use as inputs on the next time step. If you don't set a custom hidden input and cell input as we have for demonstration purposes, then you won't need to preserve these states. They will be preserved internally by TensorRT. Here, CT and HT are outputs of the LSTM unit. We extract the first predicted character and use it to generate the sequence of characters. The following code is similar to the seeding code. However, this code generates an output character based on the output probability distribution. At each time step, it simply selects the character with the highest probability. In this generation process, the last character in the gen str is used as the next input character. Now let's run the sample and see the inference results. This command runs inference with a batch size of 1. Here we can see that when the input is the k, our model predicts ing Richard shall be the strange, which is same as the expected output. Intuitively, this output makes sense as it seems like a continuation to the input string. This sample was developed using C++. However, you can implement the same with Python using our Python bindings for TensorRT. All right, that brings us to the end of this tutorial where we learned how to export and load weights from a TensorFlow model checkpoint, how to add the required layers to the TensorRT network, build the engine, serialize, and deserialize it, and finally run inference with the optimized engine. Download TensorRT today and accelerate inference of your deep learning-based applications.